and fixers are charging around eight to ten thousand pesos for this Hi everyone, if it's your first time here, I'm Charm from Reddit Adult Philippines, a channel about personal finance, entrepreneurship, and adulting how-tos. So I just came from an Instagram live with Nicole, so better check that out. I'm trying to do a series on Instagram where I interview someone for one hour every week, and it's gonna cover topics more than just personal finance and entrepreneurship. So more adulting stuff over there. So if you're interested in that, then please check out my Instagram, redditadultph. I post there almost every day since I only post and upload one video a week over here at YouTube. I got my car over two years ago and here's how I saved 150,000 pesos by buying a repossessed car. Wait a minute. No. We already did that video, so if you haven't checked that out, then make sure to check out my How I Bought a Repossessed Car video. I will link it up in the cards. So today is a follow-up video to that. We're gonna be talking about the next steps as I mentioned and promised in my previous video. So the transfer of ownership, the car insurance, and the registration renewal. And let me tell you, there were a lot of things that went wrong with my process since I did it all by myself. Um, it's not that hard per se. I think it was my situation in particular. And I'll be sharing to you guys how I resolved them. Okay, so just a disclaimer, I am gonna be listing down all the requirements, but at the same time, please take note that this was from my own experience. So my experience is transferring a repossessed secondhand car from a bank to my personal name. Please note also that I changed the CR, that's the car registration, at the same time I renewed the OR, which is the official receipt that you have to renew every year, okay? So with that disclaimer said, let's start the video. So I'm gonna be talking about four steps. First is the preparation. So preparation of documents for the MV clearance or the motor vehicle clearance. And then next is another preparation and then that's the time you go to the LTO, okay? Or the Land Transportation Office, okay? So four steps that we're gonna be talking about. Okay, so first is preparation. Ideally, before you go to the PNP, HPG, or the Highway Patrol group, you already have all your documents so that you don't have to keep going back and forth. So that was already mistake number one that I did because the first time I went there, I lacked one requirement and I'll be explaining to you guys later what it is. Okay, so here are the list of requirements that you will need if you have a secondhand car. Okay, so that's the deed of sale, notarized deed of sale, and then you have the original OR and the original CR of your car, and then you will need a photocopy of two IDs from the previous owners with three signatures in the page and the IDs need to be current, they can't be expired and then you also need a photocopy of your IDs, two of your IDs with your signatures, three of your signatures and your IDs also has to be current or not expired. And then lastly, you will need a TIN number. Okay, so those are the basic requirements, but if you are like me who processed a repossessed car, then you will need the following additional requirements. So first is you will need a release on the shuttle mortgage. So since your vehicle was previously encumbered or owned by the bank, and then you now already paid for your vehicle, then you will need your release of shuttle mortgage, meaning the bank has already um, let go of their ownership of the car. Another requirement would be a voluntary surrender of possession. So meaning the previous owner voluntarily gave up the car because they couldn't pay for it anymore or they don't want to continue paying for it anymore. Okay, so that's for if your car is a repossessed 
car or it was previously owned by the bank so here are some other requirements i'm just including it here for the sake of you guys watching um, i didn't need these requirements in particular you need a secretary certificate if your car was a company car and you will also need a special power of attorney if your car was sold to you by another person okay so there was an agent involved or some kind so yeah you will need those things as well so when you have all your requirements just make sure to photocopy everything they will most likely return everything to you they just have to check but i really wanted to make sure so i actually still have all my documents right here so yeah so they're all here they're balik bad. so yeah they're all here so i have a copy of everything even if i finished already um processing my transfer of ownership so the first two things that i had to deal with when i was still preparing for my requirements was first um since my car was bought in Bohol and the bank that was in charge of the loan was in Bohol, I needed to coordinate with the people there to give me the release of Chatel Mortgage. Um, thankfully, the um, staff over at the Cebu branch was very helpful and they really um, coordinated with the people they know there. But if you're doing it on your own and it's just in the same city or municipality as you, um, they will be giving you like a paper like this. So this is basically the promissory note with Chatel Mortgage. It should be part of the bank's job. So um, in my case, I don't know why it was processed after I bought it. And I had to wait a couple of months to do it because I had to ship this paper to Bohol and then they processed it there. So they went to the Land Registration Authority and then they had this release of Shuttle Mortgage. So this is already coming from the bank. So yeah, I had to wait a couple of weeks, maybe a month or two for that. And then when I first went to the PNP, like I mentioned earlier, um, I was missing a file and that is the voluntary surrender of possession. So basically that is a document signed by the previous owner saying that they voluntarily um, gave up their car. So basically um, they were not forced or they were aware that the vehicle was gonna be taken away. Okay, so you already have all your requirements. You have photocopies of them. The next thing you have to do is you have to go to the PNP HP and that is step number two okay so when you go there you present them all your documents it should be complete already since we already went through a list and they will give you an order of payment which then you have to go to a land bank and pay for that so i paid 400 pesos for it i saw that in other maybe provinces or cities they have to pay around three hundred pesos so i'll just say around three to four hundred pesos for that so when you're already finished with that the next step is to go to the pnp hpg again if the crime lab is there when i was doing this like over a year ago the crime lab in cebu was located somewhere else but when my sister did it for her car it was already in the same spot so she just had to return there so what you have to do there is basically you have to fill up a form. It's the motor vehicle clearance application form. You have to fill that out and then they will give you a number and then you will wait for your turn because they will be inspecting your car. Okay, so this step is to make sure that your car is not on the wanted list. It wasn't stolen and the number, you know, the chassis and engine number were not forged or anything so they're gonna do like a carbon copy and scotch tape thing 
comment down below if you understand what I mean but they're gonna do that to your car take a picture with you to make sure that they did it in person after the picture taking they will be giving you the MVIR or the motor vehicle inspection report after that you go back to the counter that you first went to to get that payment order so they will be verifying all your records and then printing your clearance but most of the time like in my case they will be asking you to come back maybe in two to three days and here's the third mistake i did i went back over three weeks later so i didn't know that once they sign that internally and they let you come back three days later it is three days later because the motor vehicle clearance that they will give you has an expiration date and it is usually seven days so when i got it three weeks later um i think because i was swamped with work maybe that's just an excuse but yeah um what they did is they can extend it one time for three days so i only had three days to finish all the other things i needed to do before the clearance would expire and i had to do everything again so i was rushing to do everything so that that was a mistake i did again so make sure that if they tell you to go back on a certain date you go back on that certain date like a decent human being okay so when you go back to that certain date or you know maybe you're lucky and you can do it within the day they will be releasing to you the clearance certificate okay this is already signed by the um, officer who processed everything all right so we are done with the pnp hpg um, we got the clearance the third step that you have to do is again prepare before you go to lto because there are gonna be additional requirements that you will be needing and of course the documents also that you got for the second step will be included you will still need all of these like i mentioned earlier so in addition you will need the accomplished and approved mvir that's what you got from the crime lab and then you will need the clearance that you get from pnp hpg and you will need the car insurance um, specifically the ctpl so that's the compulsory third-party liability car insurance that's the basic thing that they will require although you can always upgrade your car insurance we'll talk about that in a bit the next thing you will need is if you will also be renewing your or so it's already passed three years since it was brand new then you will also need an emission test okay so the emission test and of course the chassis and engine numbers so that's a basic um thing that you need every year when you renew the or of your car okay so let's talk about the two additional requirements that you have to get so first is the ctpl i have read some blogs that you can actually transfer the car insurance from the previous owner to your name but i did not get to do that um personally because um it was expiring anyway so i had to get my own and the minimum requirement if you're getting your own is the city PL, as i mentioned earlier so the ctpl or you know third party liability so the coverage of the insurance is actually very limited but if you want the basic that's the only thing required um it will cost you around 650 to 1300 pesos um that's the range but i personally got a package with um own damage and that i can say is the expensive part so from the 1300 you would need to add around six to eight thousand pesos for own damage that means that if it was your fault that you hit something or you someone then the insurance company will be covering that basically insurance car insurances like those would cost typically around 
7 to 10,000 pesos. But again, I want to reiterate, you don't need to get that per se. But yeah, if you know, most of the time you actually save more because repairing cars are very expensive okay so that's the first thing that you need to do you either transfer insurance or you get a new one and then the next one if you are renewing your or as well then you need an emission test an emission test is usually around maybe 300 to 500 pesos and usually they would also do the stencils already so that's getting the chassis and engine number for you okay so yeah those are the additional requirements that you need so this is where i encountered my fourth problem i was told by the pnp that my plate number was wrong or it was no longer the same which i was very confused with because i know that one car can only have you know one plate number forever so it was a very minor change it basically just changed the first letter of my plate number so from a they changed it to g so well they didn't change it they saw that it wasn't the current plate number anymore so i was very confused and i searched online why that was so what i read was that if your car is gonna be converted from a for hire car to a private vehicle then they will change the plate number so that's what i think it was so because of my particular situation i had an extra step that i had to do which was to visit um the lto and to get a certification that this particular plate number is indeed registered to this person with the file number and so yeah i had to have that certificate with me when i processed my car registration okay i did that first before i went to have my emission test so the last step would be to go to lto to process everything so just make sure that you have all the requirements so that you don't waste all your time going there and then lining up just to be sent back home because you forgot an important document and the thing to note here is that it is preferred that you transfer the ownership from the field office where your current CR is registered because otherwise you would be needing a confirmation of the OR and CR from the previous owner's field office, you know, where the car registration is registered. Um, yeah, you would need that. You can actually apply for that online. But yeah, that's another requirement that you would need if ever it's not the same office. Okay, so when you're already in the LTO, the first thing that you will need to do is to go to a window and submit your documents. Okay, so you would need maybe a priority number of some sorts because they will be checking your vehicle. Um, they will be checking um, and inspecting your um, signal lights, your headlights, um, your horn, your handbrakes, your um reverse and forward and i tried one time that i was asked for a hazard triangle sign you know in case um your car breaks down then they will require you to put that on the side of the road okay so um that those are just some things that they will be checking um if your car is in great condition uh, especially if it's a new repossessed car then most of the time you don't really have to worry about anything so yeah after the inspection is you then have to pay so you will go to the counter and pay if it's just transfer of ownership then you will only need around three to four or even 500 pesos but if you will also be renewing your or then it would come out to around 2000 to 2500 pesos so annually you have to renew your car mine in particular is around 2000 pesos so yeah those are just some prices you have to take note of especially if you're a first-time car owner so after paying all you need to do is to wait okay so 
the entire process from the first window to inspection to paying and then waiting again um, that can take up to maybe a day maybe even two days but yeah typically you can do it in one day um, the time that I did it there were not much people there so yeah while waiting for the documents you might want to bring some snacks you might want to have some data to play on your phone or watch ready to adult videos ah ah okay no okay but you know like this video anyway so once you've done the waiting and you've done all the work they will be giving you your new car registration with your name on it and the or as well if you are doing it all together like what i did and yeah that's basically it um make sure to photocopy those usually i don't bring the original with me in the car i just bring the policy of my insurance and as well as one or two photocopies of my or and cr okay so the purpose of this video is really because overall what i've mentioned to you is only around two to maybe three thousand pesos that's for the transfer of ownership that means you're changing the name in the car registration and fixers are charging around eight to ten thousand pesos for this and that's extremely high and they're even charging up to 15,000 pesos if you're gonna include um, renewing your OR okay so 15,000 pesos and maybe 5,000 pesos diba? Uh, it's a big savings also for you guys if you do it by yourself I would say it would maybe take you around two to three days if you really dedicate time to it I personally um, it took me a couple of months because I was so busy with work and I really didn't yeah I didn't dedicate time to it right so yeah I hope you found this video helpful I hope you like this video um, as a supplement to my previous video because I noticed that video was also um, it blew it kind of blew up for my very small channel right so I hope that this was a good supplemental video to that and as always please hit like to help this channel out and subscribe to my channel um, ring the notification bell and yeah i mean adulting's hard i get it but this is why i'm here and this is why the channel is here so that we can go through it together this has been charm again from reddit adult philippines and i will see you on my next video